the customs officer of Dubai, he came to me and he asked me, Ki, which perfume is this? What's the biggest concern of not using perfumes? Like, why don't you use perfumes? And what's your perception towards people? Not towards Abhilash, yeah. <laughs> but towards people who use perfumes too frequently. What's the highest price you are paid for a perfume? One of the most vintage yeah. perfumes Chanel. of the world. Chanel, it's yeah. number five by Chanel. This costs around 16,000. But and there's good but smell and bad smell, right? Yeah, good smell and bad smell, but again, it depends on the choices. Like, there are people who like a lot of intense. Carolina Herrera, good girl. This is a clear example of why you would buy a perfume for the packaging. What's your signature scent? I would say Abjalu. But the fragrance is what makes them stay. Fragrance is essential. So which, it's not necessary, which, actually. It, yeah. It's not a so need, need. It's yeah. not a need. It's a want. <laughs> or Hindi mein kahe to, ek shock hai. Yeah. And do you use it frequently or is like only for social settings? But I don't like this a lot. <laughs> okay. Why uh, you bought it then? Because legacy. Welcome back to the Kandama show. Today we are getting into the world of fragrance, perfumes. Because the moment you meet a person, the first thing you notice is perfume, how they smell. So let's deep dive into the consumers and the non-consumers of a perfumes. Let's get started with like, you know, give us a little bit of intro about yourself and tell us which perfumes you use and why do you use them? You, you go. Go first. Okay. <laughs> so I'm Priyanshi. I was a journalist. I'm still a journalist. I've been a journalist for the last three years. Now I'm studying at ISB and let's get straight to the topic. Perfumes. As you can see that I'm a hoarder. This is probably just a small percentage of the perfumes that I have. Um, so my favorite from these is... Um, that's very hard to choose, but I choose Giorgio Armani C. Why? Which is... It's a... I think the answer to the why is smelling the perfume. Just smell it and you tell me. Yeah, it just transports you to a better feeling, to a better mood. And <laughs> now this is not something that you can wear to a class. This is something that you can only wear to a party or to a more um, evening function, if I can call it that. So why I like it and why I like all of these perfumes is that what I said earlier, they put me in a better mood. And I think they put those around me in a better mood, so that never hurts. Oh, you Abhilash? Okay, so I'm Abhilash, and uh, I've been an actor, and I'm already an actor, and you know. You I'm both continue. like journalist, <laughs> and I'm also a journalist, actor, and also I'm an continue, actor. continue. I'll also continue to be an actor for sure. You're also MBA students now. Yeah. Because so we keep forgetting that we are still continuing, continuing. our profession while exactly, being a journalist. Exactly. At times, yeah. And uh, to be very honest, like you know, perfume for me especially, it makes me feel more confident. Okay. Like, you know, when you're in an industry, uh, like I've been in an industry for like last four years and you know, it makes you feel confident while you're shooting. And that's something, maybe maybe you could have seen a few of the other podcasts and other other big stars, like, you know, uh, maybe few of the Shah Rukh Khan's reels or something. Yeah, he's story. famous for So like, you know, everyone, smelling. all the other artists and celebrities say that, you know, he always smells good. Yeah. So that's something makes me feel more confident. And it's not like uh, you use it for the sake of using, but again, you're, you use it, I mean, just to make yourself very, feel so good and make others feel so good. Uh, honestly, I'm telling you, on campus, uh, I, I think a lot of people have asked me, or reached out to me, which yeah. perfume And of course, I, I use uh, based on the dressing that I do. Like, you know, you wear some casual, you go for some aqua. You wear something like very formal, you go for some intense. You okay. go for some evening party, you use musk. So, you know, there's, there's a lot of preferences that eventually happen. And I can see a lot of uh, good ones. Uh, these here. are like hardly 10% of what I have. The others in the room, you didn't give me much time to bring them. So, you know, <laughs> I had to bring Which one is these. your favorite from them? Um, not favorite as such, but again, uh, uh, if I have to actually pick one, then I would pick this uh, Burberry. You can just smell and let me know. <laughs> <laughs> You're using you my trick. <laughs> It's both similar. It, even this is intense. What are you actually. saying? No. Yeah, it's intense actually. That just shows that you're a noob. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm a new beginner. I'm a uh, like you know beginner for. Show purpose. me that. How can you call them? How can you call them similar? They are not. No. Okay. Maybe I should learn more. Yes. So you both talked about modes, right? Like you. Uh, let's get started with like you know not as a journalist, not as an actor, hmm. as a normal consumer of a perfumes. Like what's the first time you encountered? 
to the first perfume you bought my father was really into perfumes and i think that's where it comes from oh. that he used to buy a lot of perfumes wherever he used to travel he used to get some for me and i was really young probably in school middle school and that's when i saw a lot of perfumes around at home so i started using them so i just grew into it practically and then how you made your preferences initially my preferences were what my father used to get me okay. <laughs> because he used to get a lot so i never had to buy any but then because i had such a large sample size of perfumes i developed a sense of smell and i developed a sense of what i like and what i don't like and as abhilash was just mentioning that uh, keeping the industry part of both of us aside i think today uh, i think generally also one major part of your first impression is also the fragrance that you're carrying yeah. your first impression is not just how you look it's also <laughs> how you just enter a room and everybody just notices that you have entered so if you want to be that kind of a person then you wear a strong fragrance like something like this or oh, something wow. like this if you don't want to be noticed then that doesn't mean that perfumes are not for you then you need to use something soft something fresh like uh, this perfume so there's a perfume for every person okay and uh, uh, yeah. it feels like i'm selling perfumes but <laughs> <laughs> no look at here like he has one make your own perfume Ha so huh, that uh, yeah. that's, yeah. that's something i heard yeah, a lot like true, true. so like as a consumer like normal perfumes consumer how do you see like where you started your like see uh, there's no such good or bad perfume eventually good or bad brand but there's good but, smell and bad smell right uh, yeah good smell and bad smell but again it it Very depends subjective. on the choices it's, yeah. it's it depends on the choices like there are people who like a lot of intense like for example you go for out it's it's very intense and what people might like it you specifically so it's not about me specifically but again i don't go by the brand honest, honestly i go by the smell i mean also i go by the concentration of the perfume it's not like you just put it and you you lose it in an hour i never use those kind of perfumes okay okay uh, eventually it should last long eventually like 4 hours or 8 hours considering the environment we are in like for example you are in a classroom sitting there for like 2 hours under the ac it stays but again you're roaming around yeah. like when you're in shoots you use them often yeah. because you're in the outside environment the intensity of the perfume comes down with yeah. the time period right so i choose in that way i mean how last it long and also uh, there, there could be other things like when i was uh, who exposed you first like her, for her, her uh, case, i i like mean that's what i'm coming to the point so while i was in school we used to see a lot of uh, tv ads right so that's when i've seen the first ad of axe oh so, of girls uh, get running uh, to you when uh, you use an axe oh, perfume so that's axe what signature <laughs> okay. so school me obviously we are not allowed to get perfumes nor phones nor anything but i was the only student in the class to carry that axe signature uh. and my mom didn't know about it okay. so i used to collect all the money buy it for like 150 140 rupees what something what triggered you the ad or else the smell smell eventually first the ad yeah, then yeah. the smell yeah until then i mean who puts perfume or who puts deodorant to the school uh. while, while we are in school ages and back in 90s and 2000s starting right okay. but that's when they have attracted like children and i was one of them to get attracted to deodorants and all but again it's been almost like 15 20 years maybe that you know i've been using perfumes continuously i can live without food but not without a perfume oh, that's for sure that's a big statement and when it comes to this my myop hmm. i've seen a lot of ads and one of my closest co-actor has done the ad for myop oh, so hmm. that's how he introduced me to this brand and in this brand there are like couple of 3 to 4 perfumes which i love the most this is purple mystic and the other one is legend so you make you give them the sample and they no make... no 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 so they already have certain set of uh, perfumes there so you you can mix or you can take by the i mean mm. choice of yours like okay. you want to go for an aqua note they'll they'll put some aqua they'll mix all others and they'll give you oh. so this is more of like a floral plus kind of an intense musk that you get from this There's another one called Legend that's my favorite from MYOP. For the, for the basic people, basic people like me, <laughs> so they I don't know about the floral and the citrus and all. Mm -hmm. So how do you differentiate with a, with a good good perfume and a bad perfume? Always go for an aqua if you're if you're unable to differentiate. You get that fresh kind of a feel. Okay. So fresh kind of a smell that you get, then just go for it. Okay. I mean that's like a standard thing for any person. Like you see those Nivea ads, <laughs> ads, and you know have those kind of engage. Okay. So you know just just go for that aqua thing. You you are good to. Okay. So like I can see like in a lot of ads. we we can we have we have seen ax like you know signature and mm -hmm. uh, uh, the the mahesh babu is not that but here none of those are here true. is more of a your proper consumer of a perfumer yes yes, like, yes, yes so true, like true. in in a day wise like how many times you use perfume and like you know while using does it refresh your mood frequently or else it happens one day once in like in the morning or else in second time is just like kind of a domino effect so i'll take this yeah yeah uh, so to be honest uh, on a daily basis i change 3 times a day 
I mean, okay, I you don't, change three perfumes. Not Mo- three perfumes. I, I eventually change three times a day. My dressing eventually, okay. like morning to afternoon. Why? Afternoon How much evening. free time do you have in a day? Not like free time, but I'm. I'm People sub- doesn't have a time to bath. Like See, that's the reason. That's the reason. We have an 8 a.m. class. Yeah. And I'm the one to get ready by 8 a.m. and come to the class. My God. So this is something that almost everyone have asked me. And because for the shoots, for a, for the shoots that I've been doing for the last four years, our call sheet starts at 6 a.m. in the morning. Mm. Hmm. Six to six. So eventually, I get up by four, four thirty, get ready, and be on the set with the makeup by six p.m. Hmm. Six a.m. Sorry. So this is not something very different for me. Ki you're coming to class But at eight a.m. You can't ready. What about in a personal life? Even in personal life, I'm the same. So you morning, you, even on Sundays, you wake yes, up. Yes, yes, yes. You uh, get bath and you yeah, put yeah. your perfume. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm always, I'm always with it. So there's no differentiation between social setting and a personal setting. So there is, there is. Depends on the place where you are in. Okay. So uh, like for example, I'm telling you, like you, you come to a classroom, you can't put something very intense because that makes the other yeah. person feel very uh, weird. I mean, yeah, yeah. that person might not like the smell. Hmm. So you go by something that is very fresh or kind of an aqua or citrus notes, which is like okay, okay. okay. Like for example, David of Cool Water. Hmm. That's hmm. something I use to the class. Mm-hmm. And again, I you are going to some. <laughs> <laughs> you also use the same one. I have it in my room. Yeah, yeah. Okay. it's a men's perfume, but I really like it. <laughs> yeah, too, right? So that's something. It's like goes with everyone. Goes with every occasion also. And like for example, I go to some party in the evening, like to some pubs and all. That's when I use like you know different perfumes, like you know that's something intense or musk, which goes with the environment as well. Okay. So you know, yeah. Okay. And like uh, mood, like you haven't answered my uh, like you know question, like mood. Does it change frequently? You feel? Mood. Because yeah. there's a, there's a study actually scientific so, study. So 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 let me tell you, like on like for example, uh, during summer you sweat yeah. a lot. Honestly, yeah. you you keep walking here and there, you sweat a lot eventually. So, v- like for example, when you put a good perfume and you put some kind of a strong perfume which goes with the weather as well, hmm. that obviously changes your mood. Hmm. Like when you're sweating and all, I I personally feel like while I'm sh- like just giving you an example while I'm shooting. You have hundreds of lights on your face. Mm. The temperature increases. There's no AC, yeah. and you're doing, a, and you're already shooting for something. You keep on sweating, right? And that eventually brings down your confidence. Okay. Mm. But again, when you just go back, put some perfume and all of that, and you know, you just feel fresh. I mean, first of all, you feel fresh by yourself. That's okay. when it brings up your confidence. Okay. So that's something. I mean, I don't know how to tell you in words, but again, wo under ka feeling hai. So I, I know. I feel like it's more of a confidence, smell, confidence. First, it comes with the smell. Then you, when you feel you feel when you put your perfume, you feel confident, and that's how you like rate your perfume. I don't know, but uh, I think uh, <laughs> if I can add to that uh-huh. on the mood bit, we have five senses, right? Yeah. If you see something nice, you feel that you're in a better mood. Hmm. If you taste something nice, you feel you're in a better mood. Yeah. You're listening to music, you feel in, you're in a better mood. You touch somebody, and that's also something that puts some people in a better mood. So all your senses are working to change your mood. So this is also a sense. This is one of your five senses, right? Yeah. So if you smell something nice, that also is bound to put you in a better mood. It's one of your five senses. So as Abhilash just put it, that when you're sitting in a class, then you want to wear something safe, something that's soothing, generally for everybody. So some some fragrance like this might be. Overbearing for some people, that it might just some fragrances make people have a headache. My mother has a headache, mm-hmm. has a headache mm-hmm. when I wear these true. fragrances a lot, <laughs> and I wear perfumes like a lot, like 10-15 sprays, which is a lot for some people. Mm-hmm. So when you wear something like this, and you just refresh it, maybe after two three classes, maybe when your uh, when half of your day is over, you get back to your room and you put it again, you feel refreshed again. Ah, true. It it. I I need to smell it to be able to give you the emotion that I'm feeling right now. <laughs> that it's like just smell it. It feels fresh. Yeah. Doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. So you do feel instantly refreshed a bit. You can't do much to get back energy in your body when you're done with two classes. But this is something that can make you feel uh, slightly better and slightly more fresh. And those around you feel fresh. So that's what you use in a day. This is a very important distinction, by the way, for perfumes. Okay. Which perfumes you're using? What time of the day? You cannot use uh, an oud perfume during the day on a yeah, summer afternoon. True. You should not use uh, an Armani C intense during the day on a summer afternoon again because these are very intense perfumes, as the name suggests. So when if you use them during the day, you're walking under the sun. You might feel warmer. These are called warmer perfumes. They make you feel more warm. Mm-hmm. So they're not recommended for a summer afternoon. 
true. That's when you mm -hmm. use more fresh perfumes. These perfumes are for when you're going for a night out, you're going for a closed setting, uh, or you're going for a party somewhere where it's a closed setting, but it's not too warm. So you, you see you, perfume as your statement to put out as a personality? I think yes, and I hmm. think uh, it also changes. Because pe when you meet people first time, first they're dressing, like you know, they notice then the smell. It's a bigger aspect. Not a bigger aspect for sure. I'm not saying it's a bigger <laughs> aspect. Okay. Uh, your dressing and your how you're looking, how you talk, your personality, everything has a major role major to play. Role, yeah. So I'm not saying which part holds a bigger role, but I'm saying fragrances definitely hold a role in how you're perceived in what your first impression is when you enter a room. So you being like, you know, continuous consumer, like for you it is, right? Yeah, I've been told several times that when I walk in and somebody has not turned back to see that it's me, but they know it's me. It's me, yeah. Because that, I just that happens, in. yeah. True, yeah. true, that happens. So okay. when I'm just walking in, other than the sound of my shoes, the TikTok, yeah. other than that, the fragrance makes people feel that I've entered the room. So this is also something like every perfume has a story, like behind you, you uh, when you smell that, perfume you'll remember something oh for sure that what, is, what, that what's is, your mm. what's your story like any any of these perfumes you like you know you use and you have a certain memory for and sure does that Im impact to buy more uh, of the same brand again and again there are certain brands which we buy again and again but not everything Why? like not but not like for example i might use this once but again i might not use this again because i want to try something but there are certain perfumes like for example this one mm. i keep on buying them i mean once i uh, once it gets over I'll, I'll buy it again but again when it comes to memory i'll say that there are certain perfumes like you know like for example david of cool water mm. it's like a stagnant one it always stays in your wardrobe no matter what mm. Agar, uh, it's a go to perfume it's a go to perfume i mean that always reminds you because most of the times like in the mornings or maybe somewhere you you're just going for a walk or something like that or maybe you're just whiling around here and there i mean you use that perfume and you meet a lot of people that's when they come and they talk to you they ask let me just put it this way, like uh, uh, before getting into ISB, I had, um, I mean, uh, for the New Year's and Christmas, I went to Dubai. So I was just roaming around and while I was returning back, I bought a few in the duty free. So I bought a lot of perfumes. It's famous for yeah. perfumes. Perfumes. Yeah, and yeah. I bought a lot of perfumes and honestly, MYOP1, huh. I put it that day because, uh, you know, I was traveling, I had a flight, so I just carried this fine 50 ml bottle in my bag. So I just put that perfume because I was getting into the flight. Yeah. Okay, and it doesn't even cost much, honestly, because that's when I got to know about this, and I took one. The customs officer of Dubai, he came to me and he asked me, Ki, which perfume is this? <laughs> he doesn't know. He doesn't know, because obviously, MYOP, I don't know if it's in Dubai or no. Okay. And obviously, Dubai being a hub of perfumes, yes. like, yes. they have a lot of perfumes. I mean, honestly, we go there to buy, yeah. Yeah. and this is something, I just bought it in an orbit mall here. <laughs> and he comes and asks me, Ki, kon sa perfume hai? Yeah. Wow. And then I gifted that to him, Ki, you please keep it, and if I come back next year, and if you are still here, then I'll, I'm going to get it for you. Yeah. So that's why, I mean, there are certain things which makes you remember a few of the incidents that happen. So eventually, I'm telling you, right, that legend is my always go-to perfume, no matter what. Okay. I'll always have that in my wardrobe. Okay. Yeah. What about you? I think the memory aspect is very strong. Um, as I said, that uh, the fragrance that you're wearing also depends on the mood and the outfit that you have on that day. So this perfume, uh, Sea Intense, I used to wear. I still do wear it a lot when I'm going for like family functions. When I'm mm. going for when I'm wearing heavy Indian outfits or when I'm going for a shadi or for a for an engagement. So every time I smell this, I think of going to a family function or a shadi with my entire family sitting in a car and the entire car is smelling of this. I instantly get that memory back. So I think just one perfume transports you to a time uh, where you used it a lot and that is that is a very special part of a perfume. Another thing is that whenever you go on a trip, you usually carry only one perfume yeah. with you. So, like, this is a perfume that I carried when I went to Agra recently with my mother. So, every time I smell it, I get transported back to that trip. Oh. So, I have a lot of, like, trip perfumes that, perfumes that are designated and that remind me of a particular trip. This trip, uh, there's another one that's in my room that reminds me of a trip with my friends. Uh, that I went to last year. So every perfume, I think, has a, has memory, a memory attached to it. Uh, some perfumes also have memories of some friends or people you've been with, their memories attached. So 
if you get gifts from some people or if uh, your friends use some perfumes, like my friends use some very signature perfumes and if I smell those perfumes on somebody else, I get reminded of yeah, my friends. You have so yeah, like, so I think uh, what, what, we call, um, uh, what we call this in business language, that perfumes have a very high recall value. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, they take you back to the time when you last use them or when is your last important memory with those perfumes, they transport you back to that time. And I think that's a, that, like some perfumes remind me of my college life a lot because I use them all three years. So that's a, that's a great feeling to just go back in time with that one sniff. So that's an incredible part so, that these no, fragrances No, there's a real us. study in it, like you know, visuals have a 40% or 30% of recall value, but the smell has 50 to 60%. Hmm. Let me give an example. Uh, when my mom first time, uh, she went to USA in 2008, she got a perfume DNG Blue. Hmm. Okay, so that's when I smelled it. And later again she went, she came back and you know, but even today, it's been like 16 years now, she's using only one perfume. She never likes another perfume, no matter, we, Why? we take we, her to the store and we ask her to try a lot of perfume, she gets a headache. Huh. She only uses one perfume for 16 years now, the same one, the same glass bottle, DNG Blue. That's it, simple. So even today when I go to an Orbit Mall or some uh, AMB or wherever and go to some perfume section and when I smell that DNG, that only reminds me of my mom. Yeah. Mm. And that's when I start missing her. Ki, are yaar, ye to okay. Like now we can see there is a kind of you know mood uh, attached to the perfume. There's a kind of memory attached to the perfume. There's a kind of confidence and like you know the way you present is also attached to the perfume. So let's come to the packaging product wise. Like how does packaging uh, involves a lot? And how does the concentration level and the price? There's so, three aspects, right? Like in a product the, level. Uh, packaging, concentration and, and price. price. Yeah. So let me start with the first one. Um, a good example of this is this perfume. <laughs> I, I can see you have bought it for the proper packaging one. <laughs> it's uh, Carolina Herrera, good girl. Okay. And obviously I bought it for the packaging. I didn't smell it before I um, bought you, it. Okay. I actually asked my father to get it when he was traveling and I hadn't smelled it. I had mm -hmm. just seen the bottle and I was really, I said I, I have to have it in my collection. <laughs> That's it, it just looks great. Coincidentally, it also smells great, which, <laughs> okay. is, which is a great brownie point. Are you satisfied after buying it? For sure, this is my second, third bottle. Okay. I've emptied two. Um, so this, is a clear example of why you would buy a perfume for the packaging. This has a very interesting sort of uh, strange, if you might call it. You can um, call it specified for the like you know female the packaging. Yeah, and they also make a male version of this. By the way, this is Carolina Herrera, good girl. Huh. They make Carolina Herrera, bad boy. Okay. Which is why the good girl and bad boy? <laughs> <laughs> why I, they can't say good boy? I'm not commenting on the connotations, <laughs> <laughs> but that perfume is shaped like a like a bijli. Okay. And so that's also very eccentric packaging, right? It's very different kind of bottle. Even Middle Eastern perfumes that you just mentioned, I true. don't have them on me right now, but they have very different kind of bottles. Like they'll true, be shaped true. like a chirag or they'll be shaped like a... I have one perfume that I got from uh, Qatar. It's shaped like the Burj Khalifa. Okay. So these yes. are very <laughs> the eccentric perfumes that you might want to have. You want to have they them look for great. the packaging uh, sense in the beginning and then you want to... See I that. would buy it, like this one I bought for the packaging, but I love it for the fragrance. Okay. So that's why I re-bought it. <laughs> if I just liked it for the packaging, my first bottle could have been enough. Even after emptying it, I could have just kept the first bottle and that true, looks good true, in true. my collection. But because it also smells great, so that adds. So I think packaging can get consumers to first buy the product. So that can be the first push uh, for the customers yeah. to buy the product. But mm -hmm. the fragrance is what makes them stay. So if you want a consumer to buy your product only once, you make a fantastic bottle or you make a really different bottle like this shape of a, a heel sandal. But if you want them to keep buying your perfume, fragrance is essential. The other thing that you talked about, concentration. There are three kinds of concentrations. You mm -hmm. have an EDP, yeah. you have an EDT, and you have cologne and your cologne, deodorants yeah. after that. So we don't get into that category as perfume But you look for the concentrations, right? <laughs> for sure, EDP yeah. yeah. So EDP is the most concentrated yeah. segment. It has the highest um, percentage of the oil or the fragrance that's used mm -hmm. in a perfume. So like uh, this one uh, from, uh, this is an EDT. There's no EDP that comes in this uh, perfume. It's Versace Dylan Blue, but it's a very popular perfume. It's a very fresh perfume. 
So this is an EDT, but because it has great fragrance, it also stays more than normal EDT. Because uh, even I, David of Cool Water is an EDT. Is an yeah. EDT. Because yeah. concentration, higher concentration, the long lasting the impact. Yes. Is. Mm -hmm. So usually you will find a lot of these intense perfumes in very high concentration because they are very long lasting. Long so you choose which has a long lasting impact. Simple EDT, EDP is something which you go with. If oh. it's an EDT, unless and until it smells so great like. Cool water or the, the washache that she. But as a basic about. consumer, there's a difference here long lasting and the shorter period. Concentration uh, has an impact on it, right? Two factors here that one, um, if you want a perfume for the long lasting um, feature of that perfume, then you definitely go for an EDP because that has more concentration that yeah. will last you longer number of hours it will probably last you six seven hours okay. uh, mm -hmm. depending on which perfume or which designer you're going for <laughs> but on the other side if you really like a perfume and if you want a fresher perfume like for the day and you don't care much about the long lasting aspect then of course you go for an edt like i have a couple of edts in my collection and i'm fine with them because i like the fragrance and, and the price pricing part how sensitive are you I think that really depends on whether you're a new perfume consumer or um, the how it started. You started by like I know your father like you hmm. know uh, like exposed you to the perfumes, hmm. but like after a certain point you started earning and how much you're willing to pay for the perfume. Oh, that's a very tough question. I don't think uh, my parents want to listen to this question <laughs> <laughs> that I spent so much on perfumes. Uh, that really depends on where you're at. Uh, in the scale of the consumers. Hmm. Uh, I think one sentence that puts it well is that we say that in Hindi, that shock is a big thing. So, perfume is a shock ki cheez hai, bahut logon ke liye. Yeah. It's not a necessity. You because it's need. more of psychological impact because confidence hmm. and uh, of course. Like a memory on all yeah. these facts. So, you yeah. don't need a perfume. It's not a it's not a piece of clothing, it's not a sunscreen also. Which, it's not a necessity which, actually. It, yeah. It's not a so need need. It's yeah. not a need. So it's a it's a want <laughs> or Hindi mein kahe toh ek shock hai. Toh jiska jitna bada shock ho utne paise kharch karne ko tayar ho. And what's the highest like you know, uh, what's the highest price you are paid for the perfume? This is my most expensive perfume. I think it costs around, this is one of the most vintage yeah, perfumes Chanel. of the world. Chanel, it's yeah. number five by Chanel. It's one of the first few perfumes, first few vintage perfumes. And uh, this costs around 16,000 currently okay. um, as far as I remember it costs around and do you 000. use it frequently or is like only for social settings okay this might be politically incorrect but I don't like this a lot okay <laughs> why uh, you bought it then because legacy I mean so here you take by the branding maybe yes I have uh, another one of this so Chanel makes two uh, similar ones Chanel makes every most of their perfumes in a similar packaging they just have a different color and a different um, sticker or a different kind of bottle but the shape is the same the structure is the same so they have another call uh, another one called Mademoiselle mm -hmm. and that's also I think priced around the same uh, level that's also around 12 13,000 if I'm not wrong and I really like Mademoiselle okay. uh, that really um, makes me feel uh, makes me feel like I'm put together, like I'm looking nice. Even if I'm not looking nice, it makes me feel like I'm looking nice. The smell makes you feel good. Yes, yeah. for sure. So that I really liked. I got both of these together. I didn't get them. I was gifted both of these together. So I didn't buy them. My father bought them again, as I told you. But will I spend 16,000 on this? Again? Probably not. Okay. Will I spend 16,000 on uh, Chanel Mademoiselle? Yes. Okay. I also have another perfume called Black Opium by YSL which is also uh, probably in the higher range. I absolutely love that perfume. It's my signature scent. I will pay 16,000 for it. I will pay 17,000 <laughs> also for it. I will pay that amount is for- Is there any perfume is more than 20, 30,000? No, but I think, as I said, it. Uh, I, I don't have a perfume that costs more than 20,000, but it depends on how much you value that scent for the, the emotion that it makes you feel. Mm. Like this perfume is discontinued, discontinued now. They don't make C Intense anymore. They make uh, Armani C, which is a red colored bottle that looks exactly like this, but they don't make C Intense. So I will be willing to pay um, several thousand extra if I get this bottle again. This is my last bottle and I don't use it a lot so that it doesn't get over. So I think if, if, you, if you're really attached to a scent, True. You can You'll, pay a lot more for that. But if you're really just entering the perfume space right now, 
then you might not want to pay so much. Then I think two, three thousand is a fair amount that people would want to spend. And for that, then you have a lower category of perfumes. You don't get these designer products. So that depends on where you are at the consumer um, scale, if I may call it that, from a shock level <laughs> to just a. <laughs> the, the, it I, I becomes to, a habit. You want that, uh, like you know, scent again and again, right? Yes, and um, as we've also talked about this, I just want to mention it again that it depends on what utility you're de deriving out of the yeah. perfume. <laughs> so if, uh, let's say for these perfumes, the utility I'm deriving is that I'll wear them uh, when I go outside and I want to uh, smell nice for myself and also for others around. If I want to go in a social setting, I'll wear these perfumes. But I also wear a different set of perfumes when I'm at home, when there's for nobody the around setting. me. Yeah, yeah, when there's absolutely nobody around me. So that's when I don't want to waste my designer what, perfumes. What emotions does you feel when you are in a personal setting and social setting? I think like when you've taken a shower at night and you want to go go to bed, then you just put on a light mist. Mm -hmm. You don't put on some of these heavy perfumes because no, you, no, it's, no, no, no. You, you have to go to bed, you want to just feel relaxed. So there's some of these mists that are very nice and soothing. So you get out of the shower, you put some lotion that makes you feel nice and then you put some uh, nice mist. So you want to put a mist because mists have really low, uh, mists have a really low concentration uh -huh. of the fragrance. So for the social setting, you use the high concentration ones for yes. the personal low concentration ones. Because then only you want to smell it. Yeah. So there's something called, is it called Siage, I think? The, mm -hmm. the projecting ability of a perfume. Uh, that's called that's called a specific term. The, project, uh, the projecting ability of a perfume determines where you want to use it. Mm. If you're in a social setting where there are lots of people, you're going for a family function, then you definitely want to use one of these perfumes that have a high projecting, mm. um, look at it uh, like this way, that if you're standing here, you have a like circle around you, till that level your perfume is reaching. So th there's a radius around you. The Does this all come to your mind while you're buying a perfume? You can't test the projecting ability of a perfume while you're buying it because you can't smell it on yourself and ask 20 people <laughs> to survey, oh, yeah. can you smell it? Can you smell it there? I think that's something that you uh, learn with time uh, when you're using it. But there are obviously reviews on Frantica, Fragrantica, the YouTube reviews where you can find out the siage and uh, the projecting abilities and the um, uh, intensity of any perfume. So you can do that before you get to buy a perfume. But I, I was saying that uh, the projecting ability determines where you want to use it. If you're using it, uh, where there are a lot of people, then you want to buy an intense perfume and you want to use a perfume that has a high projecting ability. But if you're the only one that's smelling it, if you're at home, then you can just use a mist because mist, yeah. mist yeah. is good enough to reach your nose. It's not good enough to reach somebody else's nose <laughs> who's sitting right in front of you. It won't even reach you probably. Yeah, yeah. For you, like the packaging, price and the concentration, the same? same? Mm. Packaging, no. Uh, depends again. You you get a lot of perfumes at different shapes and sizes and also. I'll never I can see a lot of similar the, packaging yeah, here. Yeah. Actually, so apart from that. Apart from this one, so I just tried this one. It looks like a gold biscuit. So you know, <laughs> I just tried it. Why? But, yeah. Why you bought it? Like sorry. Just to uh, have that. No, uh, no. I've already heard about this a lot. Uh, okay. So uh, that's when I got this packaging. So I don't really bother much about the packaging. And next one is a concentration. That's something I totally agree to. I mean, I need the highest concentration ones. But again, uh, saying that, you know, considering different occasions and different places where you go, it depends, right? So that's when I segregate in such a way that you use the highest concentration ones when you're in a large gathering. Yeah. And, you know, medium concentration ones when you're with your close circle so that, you know, they don't get irritated much with the <laughs> perfume. <laughs> and the lowest concentration when I'm alone or maybe in the classroom. At yeah. times. So because of that, the reason that I'm getting into ISB and, you know, going to a class, I, I bought a lot of perfumes, which are like <laughs> low, low, concentration. Concentration. <laughs> low concentration and, and then EDT. Okay. But my always go to is EDP. Okay. okay. And price point, honestly, I never bothered about the prices because see, uh, I'm telling you that, you know, it's been like 12, 15 years, maybe I'm, I'm, I'm I've perfume, been perfumes yeah. and I've been using perfumes. Uh, so uh, if I have to say like, you know, price really matters, then no. Mm -hmm. Because uh, honestly, this is not something you want to have it. Uh, What's the highest you know, price you are paid for the perfume? Uh, highest is maybe 23, 24, something like that. This, 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 this is like 200 ml bottle. So okay. it eventually costs like around 26, 27, okay. something around. And even this costs around like 20, maybe. 
Yeah. So the highest was like around in twenties, not thirties though, but in twenties for sure. I just say like you can't live with the food, but you. Uh, I know. I'm. I'm sure about it. That's what I'm telling you. I have like ten thousand in my bank right now. For yeah. example, let's say, and yeah. I'm getting a perfume for nine thousand. I'll go buy that. Okay. No doubt in that, for sure. Yeah. Okay. Cool. What's your current inventory of perfumes worth? I, I'm like, telling you, right? These are like hardly ten percent. I have like. The hundreds of perfumes at home and at, at, in my quad. He didn't give me much time to go to my quad. Have you? I can't put hundred here. <laughs> no, have you ever counted? Hmm, I have more than like one sixty, one seventy. In your quad? Quad, may I have around like twenty, twenty-five. Oh, then oh. he is well. Because uh, see, I stay like five minutes Robert away from Kanzibar. the campus. Yeah, I so. have around thirty-five, forty perfumes. So, so I'm like fond, and moreover, considering me being in the industry. I get a I get certain perfumes. Uh, I mean, from the brands as well. I mean, while I do some ads, while I do hmm. some shoots and all, I get them. And also, I have a lot of friends, and my family stays in US. So, so like eventually, they aspect, get. So one aspect, like where, where do you find the reviews? Like, do you look for online, or else you refer a friend or someone? See, I can spend my whole day searching for perfumes. Hmm. I can spend my whole day in a mall smelling the perfumes. I I yeah that's that, that's there. When you smell a lot of perfume, hmm. then you can't judge much. Hmm. So olfactory I, fatigue. Yeah. So when I went to this MYOP the first time, I, he was showing me a lot of perfumes like you know those this legend Calicut Spice something Bombay Woods something something, and you know I was able to smell like around eighteen twenty perfumes let's say, and I've chosen only two. Okay. Out of those two, one was Purple Mystic and one was Legend. So I've been using them for the last four five months maybe, but you know I'm I'm good. So I can spend my whole time. Okay. Yeah. And like one thing we'll wrap up like what's a bad memory you have with the fra- fragrance? You we, you bought it and you had a bad memory and you stopped using it. Did did it happen with you? A bad memory. Yeah, because like anything like no. the smell you regretted after buying it. No, no, nothing. Even if something bad happens, it's not because of perfume, right? It's because no, of some the memory attached, like. right? Like lot of memory uh, is attached to the smell. Hmm. Any brand or anything <laughs> you you regretted after buying it. Just because of someone recommending, and you couldn't, like you know, feel it after buying. See, it. let's say, like, like Priyanshi was telling, Chanel is a legacy brand. Mm. And she even really liked some, it. Even even if something bad happens, also, it's it's a brand. I mean, it's a go-to brand for a lot of people. And I, I I'm sure I've, I've smelled a lot of uh, Chanel perfume because I had to take one for my mom, yeah. <laughs> and she just she denied it because it. she only want DNG blue. Okay. DNG blue maybe again you have a certain called intense and all but she doesn't like that she mm-hmm. only wants the DNG blue no matter what okay so you know there's nothing like you know it's a bad memory because of a brand or some perfume it could be some situation but again perfume i don't think it yeah. matters a lot okay and i think in terms of um, if you talk about uh, whether you regret buying a perfume um, as i said i don't like this fragrance but um, does it look good on my shelf <laughs> <laughs> yes it does that's okay. that's good enough if it's adding it's that it's for you to make uh, feel good and it's for me i don't think that i could have had a great collection of perfumes without having this very iconic vintage perfume so i needed to have it and it doesn't smell bad it just doesn't smell worth 16000 that's all i'm saying okay. so it it and you have to also look at the time that it was made in it's one of the oldest perfumes yeah. so it was made at a time when you didn't have so many innovations in fragrance so this was made with very basic notes very basic fragrances that's why it smells so basic so it, it, it if a if you buy a perfume for for the fragrance if you really like the perfume for the fragrance then you will not regret buying it because you like the fragrance if you like it for the packaging then you can't regret buying it because it looks good and even if it smells bad it looks good and that's why you bought it and then uh, you'll not rebuy it like again man you rebuy it for the fragrance but you buy it first for the packaging or the legacy value of true, it true. but for somebody who's just starting out with perfumes then i think there's definitely a regret aspect involved for them because if they're just starting out they're investing 2 3000 and they don't spend this much money on fragrances then it doesn't work out then definitely they'll regret buying it or they probably might stop buying perfumes because of that so having a good first perfume experience is very important which is why i recommend uh, reading review 
reviews. There are lots of YouTube reviewers as well. Uh, there, there are a lot of reviews you can get on Fragrantica and uh, you get the specific notes, you get how it makes you feel and everything on the internet. So you do your research uh, and you can uh, decide what perfume to buy based on that. And everywhere, in every mall, you have a shopper's stop. You have lots true, of true. fragrances <laughs> there. So you try everything. Um, you smell coffee in between trying everything. <laughs> and uh, that's when you realize which fragrance you like. And if it doesn't work, then you don't regret it. It's an experience and they're just nice. I mean, <clears throat> at times, you you make just a wrong choice of buying a perfume just to try it out yeah. at times. Like for example, there's a perfume called uh, Azaro um, okay. by Paco Rabanne. So I love that perfume. Honestly, that's the first, maybe that's the last perfume that, uh, you know, uh, I would say that I'll ever let go of. Right, okay. So I had a chance of buying that perfume again, but I didn't buy. Why? Maybe I just wanted to try at that point of time. Hmm. Maybe I just wanted to try another one. Uh, because I so know that it's the, uh, the way you uh, use perfume, you change it frequently? No, no, not like that. But see, c c certainly so I'm just telling you, like for oh. example, like Priyanka said, there's a certain fragrance of a person, like as soon as the person comes, you yeah. feel that, okay, Priyanka has come now. Yeah. Right? So there are certain things which you'll always continue to use. Like there's another one called Absolute from Giorgio Armani. Hmm. That's always my go-to perfume. So I, like I have it. I have, setting, I, so if, even when I buy that perfume, I'll buy two. Okay. I mean, I'll, I'll buy sets of two. So that, you know, I'll never have to be in a situation where, are ye ho gaya, yaar, abhi rehna tha na, ye situation mein. I shouldn't feel that way. Okay. So there's a choice again. But at times, like for example this, I don't think I'll buy. I've used it. I've used 200 ml of that perfume. I've used it for a month or two. You didn't like it? or No, no, I liked it. But again, this is not my go-to choice. Okay. Hmm. But if given a chance between this and that, I'll go for that one. Okay. But at times again, you want to try one. This was one of them. Is it because of the, the memories you attached or no, else no, the not smell? At not at all. Not at all. You just want to give it a try for Give it a one. try. Okay. For just, regularly you have a one which is like, you know, your regular not one. Not just one, but a lot come, depending <laughs> on your dresses again. Okay. Like the, the way you dress, the way you go to a party, the way you come to class, the way you go meet outside okay. when you wear a suit. Or something. So you're a diversified consumer. Yeah, yeah. You explore. So I made sure that when I wear a tra Indian traditional, I'll use these kind of perfumes. Mm -hmm. Given okay, that, your dressing has a huge influence on the perfume. Yeah, yeah, Obviously, for sure. okay. you just can't put something out there, musk and <laughs> wear something like, you know, some kurta and all that doesn't sound well, yeah. Yeah. right? So. If you're wearing some heavy traditionals and you wear something like a... Uh, EDT, then doesn't make any you. sense. Okay. Yeah, so, this you, is like for a jeans and a t-shirt kind something. of vibe. Yeah. And um, adding to what Avilash said, I think what he's trying to... Um, say when he says go to perfume, uh, what it's also called for some people is a signature scent. Mm. That people have a signature scent. Um, it's a signature scent is what people attach to you. Mm. That if they smell, uh, like a lot of my friends, when they smell this perfume on anybody, they get reminded of me. Oh. So this is my signature scent because I use it a lot. So that is that becomes your go-to perfume and there, there's no stopping. You'll keep buying bottles of your signature perfume for the rest of your life. Oh. Yeah. Uh, so like this Once you're a, a consumer, you're all-time consumer. Once yeah. it becomes... Yeah. Yeah. If, if it becomes your signature scent because you get identified by that now scent. How do you rate the signature scent? How because he, how do you rate, like how do you sell this, uh, tell that this is my signature scent? Because hmm. in your case, you use a multiple, like you know, you are diversified. You are not stick to one. So, no, hmm. see, it's not about sticking to one. Like, let's say, that there was this perfume, uh, while I was working at Dell, I used to use a perfume called Hollister SoCal. Okay. And th there's no store in India, especially. So, you need to get it only from other countries. And especially, my brother used to send it from US. Okay. I used like a couple of like eight, nine bottles, honestly. Okay. But all of a sudden, I just stopped using it. Not because I don't want to use it. Because see, there are certain scents, there are certain fragrances you get stick to. Like for example, even now I can imagine David of Cool Water, how it smells. Mm. Mm. I can imagine how Absolute smells. What's your signature scent? Uh, I would say Absolute. Okay. But again... If people uh, recall you, you'll, they are like, you know, the for sure, of For sure, for sure, yeah, absolutely. Uh, exactly. Again, so, okay. you know, you can smell it. But for, for, let's say, for example, this one. And I don't come, remember wait, the smell. My, my I don't remember the fragrance. How come you end up saying, this is my signature scent? I think the perfume that you use very, very frequently. often. It defines okay. you as well. It defines <laughs> you. Like for me, it's this one and another one, YSL Black Opium. It's and a conscious decision. You want to use it frequently. Because you love it. So you Maybe there's also, back of your mind... 
you I think there's a personality that you attach to a perfume mm -hmm. true no when you uh, smell a really intense perfume um like something really intense something really strong you will attach sort of a confident personality to that perfume right and if you smell something casual then yeah it's casual so brand it's reputation fun. brand story branding all these parts comes to you yeah yeah while it does come yeah. okay okay for sure and um i think that both of my uh, signature perfumes are also designer perfumes and um i do prefer uh specific brands like um i really like ysl and i've liked uh, armani's perfumes as well i have two from armani right here mm -hmm. i have two from versace right here mm -hmm. uh, this also brings me to another point which is very interesting that uh, there's um, often a discussion of uh whether women should use men's perfumes yeah gender specific yeah yeah women's would, perfumes yeah, yeah. so i have a clear opinion on those i don't think they should be categorized um perfumes should be categorized they sure. should be categorized for sure because i think perfumes do have specific feminine attributes and some perfumes do have specific masculine attributes and they can be they should be categorized differently sure. but there should be there's no rule that a woman can't use a men's perfume this is a men's perfume and mm. this is my second bottle okay. i use mm -hmm. it a lot this is 200 ml which shows you how much i use this yeah. i have another one back in my quad it's a dng the one which i also really like uh i have ck uh so i have a lot of men's perfumes this one uh, is one of those versace de lune blue uh and i use them a lot i use them uh So it doesn't stop you to buy, uh, like you know. I don't have. It doesn't stop you to buy gender specific or no. no. Like if I smell a perfume on somebody and I really like it, or if I smell a perfume at a mall and I really like it, then whether it's for men or whether it's for women, that doesn't matter. Okay. If it makes me feel great, then I buy it. And you? They also make these perfumes now. I did use a lot. I mean, um, Chanel ka I used one that was green in color. I don't know what was the. Well, But like, no, do you uh, do you do you have? No, someone I don't. Someone said like, See, as long as the uh, fragrance is good and it goes with my personality, okay, I use it. I don't categorize. So, what your brand is telling you that there was a, a female? There was, there was, honestly, I'll tell you, there was this perfume, uh, Victoria's Secrets, uh, Aqua, some mist. It was. Okay. I have that at my place. Okay. I mean, I use it. I know it. It. it I mean, they they they, they brand it as a they female. brand it as you know it's a female yeah. or maybe it, it's like woman centric and all of that. But again, when when you smell good in that, why <laughs> not? Yeah, yeah I'll okay. use that. If you feel good, so as a boy, would you ever use a good girl? Why not? <laughs> smell it. <laughs> yeah, smell it and okay. it's just. Why don't you use it? Yeah. Will you use it? Oh, this I might use when I wear a shawani. Ha, okay. you're right. Or some, yeah, heavy you dressing. You associate yourself with the dressing immediately. Yeah. I told you this goes really well with Indian traditions. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'll use it only when I wear a shirt. Le, you can pick yeah. one of his and like you know. Uh, Maybe. Yeah, I can this. use a lot of men's perfumes. Okay. I I've used this also. You have used it. Okay. I steal my brother's and my father's perfumes a lot. Oh. Oh, definitely, I would use this. not for a traditional setting but no. yeah for a day setting not for a day setting also but like if i'm going for a party, party i could yeah, i would definitely that, use this yeah. and i think it's just how it makes you feel it doesn't matter whether it's whether it's for men and women and now what brands have also started doing is that they make these couple perfumes <laughs> uh, huh. like these two they both called dilim blue oh this is versace dilim blue this is versace dilim blue but this is for men, men? this is for women okay. so they come from the same family of dilim blue but they've made this masculine and this feminine what do you use both i use both oh. so what they told me i mean i was I was, i was hardly eighth standard i believe okay. that was the first time when i bought that ether i put it here here and here yeah. i was removed from the school that day why it smells so strong oh, it was God. so strong. it was in intimidating other people yeah it was so strong that i walked from the main gate to the classroom and people could smell it in the classroom teacher got a headache every student were just putting the uh, uh, finger on like you know they were covering their nose i was removed from the school because of that perfume So, so but that's I your liked bad it. memory from no, no, <laughs> I liked it. I liked it though. So it's not a bad memory for you, but other people don't. Uh, but for other people, it was. <laughs> so that's when I stopped using that perfume. Yeah. But I think that. Uh, but you liked it, but why? You stopped it for other people. But after some time, you started. Because I was it. removed from school for that. I mean, that day I was <laughs> sent back home. But after growing up, now do you use it? No, no. I mean, it was. I, I'm telling you, it was uh, back in 2007 and 8. Okay. So I'm telling about. But let's not uh, label it as like that. No, 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 no. I like it a lot. I like it a lot. Like out. 
बस उसको छुपाना है अब कैसे छुपाओ समझ में नहीं आ रहा था बिकॉज शी वॉज अगेंस्ट परफ्यूम्स बैक देन लाइक आई वॉज हार्डली थर्ड फोर्थ स्टैंडर्ड थर्ड फोर्थ स्टैंडर्ड हाँ दैक्स वॉज रिलीज एक्चुअली एक्स के थ्रीज फोर्स एंड फाइव राइट so i took it i put it in my school bag hmm. so you have a certain pocket of uh, where you put a bottle so that's where i put it because my bag was very yeah. big so you know every day my mom checks because uh, you know she checks whether i have all the books i have done the homework and all so before she checks before my grandfather checks my homework before my tuition sir checks my homework i used to remove that put it in the tiffin box or put it in the any of those uh, dressing tables we used to have at home right so i used to put it so in so what there. was the urge it was uh, is it a urge to smell good or else mm-hmm. is it a urge to use a perfume so like i tell you like i'm telling you perfume was a perfume was out of my reach back mm-hmm. then it was only a deodorant that you have okay. perfumes hmm. were out of reach yeah. I, i i come from a place like i i was born and brought up in warangal yeah. it was a place which is 250 kilometers yeah. away from here So perfumes were a big thing for me. All I don't even know that perfumes exist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't know that perfumes exist. It's a diet to don. I only know that it's a deodorant. Yeah. You you put it and you smell good. That's it. That's <laughs> what I know. Scent, uh, scent, 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 B R U T okay hmm. brute green color ka tha I, I i even now that's the only smell i'm telling you just after this uh, recording and whatever it is you just go buy one brute from any of the ratnadeep or stores okay. that's the complete different smell that you ever feel i mean apart from all this apart from no no it's a very good it's, it's a it's a very good perfume honestly completely different i mean nothing can ever come close to brute Okay. I mean that's Are for you sure. using it frequently now? I I have one bottle with me. Yeah. So okay. It's the green color one. You have a red, black and green. Okay. Uh so the green ones I'm talking about. Brute. Any person I can you can ask your parents or maybe some other like the generation before us. You can ask them. Most of them would have used Brute for sure. But okay. did you buy Axe looking at the ad thinking that women will come rushing behind you? Yeah, if you I, use I, I thought that <laughs> and I went to school also so you know that did happen. So <laughs> <laughs> But is it why it was that your motive to buy a perfume to attract women as the uh, ads show us? Mm. She's becoming journalist now. <laughs> This is a show you can't no, get. But, but, but one thing one thing is for sure whenever you smell good when you use a good perfume no matter what like even I do when 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 a other person is smelling good or something like that I don't mind asking them what perfume they put. And does it you're um, not answering the question. No, does it influence the purchase decision <laughs> again and again? It might. Yeah. Oh, it might. But yeah, I mean, of course whatever you asked I mean that's true. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> so let's get to the last question like you know, do you think expensive perfumes are better than the normal ones? That can't be a clear cause and effect relationship. No. Some expensive perfumes happen to also smell great, which happened uh, in your in my case usually, but like this expensive perfume doesn't smell great to me. So it's it's not something that goes together. Um like black opium and um this one see intense, they smell really great and they're a bit expensive, but that doesn't always have to be the case. I've also smelled some great um you know, budget perfumes like niche perfumes, hmm. a lot of Middle Eastern perfumes there are niche they cost around 3 4000 or uh, some even cost 2 3000 but they smell great they are very long lasting they have a very high projection quality so you can get those perfumes with a lower budget also this is this is not so there is no related. perception like expensive are better no, there no, is a no. perception yes because perfumes are uh, are also attached to status a lot mm. why people buy designer perfumes or why people want to smell like a chanel mademoiselle or a chanel gabriel because they think that that's attached to a certain class of people they think that that's attached Elite. to a certain status mm, kind of yeah so, so even wha- you think the same thing I think that is a perception that There's is perception. even if we deny back of our mind we do have that perception that some perfumes categorically quote unquote smell cheap 
that they don't uh, people shouldn't use those perfumes cheap, because like, cheap as in like they get to your head i call the, those i'm just calling those perfumes cheap that they get to your head that that mm -hmm. make you that make you want to make a face like this that I don't like this. Uh. They don't make you feel good. They they just get to your head, kind of. And there are some perfumes that make you feel more sophisticated. So they, there is a status symbol also attached to perfumes. So in that respect, more expensive perfumes make people feel like they're smelling more rich. So the one thing, like if a new consumer, if if I am I'm, uh, if I am a new seller perfumes, I'll come to you and mm. I'll, I'll not tell the price. And I'll give you a perfume and test you. So, uh, like, how much are you willing to buy? As long as it, sm it smells good, I'm I'm okay. So you smell uh, not the branding part, not, not the all. story or anything. The smell matters a lot. Yeah, of course, na. Right? I mean, at the end of the day, that matters a lot, irrespective yeah. of whatever the brand or whatever the price it is. Yeah. As long as it suits your personality, as long as it suits your mood, it sets your mood. Then you're good and to how go. do you rate that like scent? You, they meet, the moment you see it, like you'll get it. Yeah, that, I mean, yeah. When, when you're, when you're a perfume lover and you've been using it for years together, yeah. so you, if you'll eventually have a judgment whenever you smell a perfume, is it good? Bad? No. Yeah, it's like that. But if it's a new brand and the fragrance is fantastic, mm -hmm. but it costs 15, 20,000, I won't spend 15, 20,000 on mm -hmm. a new brand. Because even the if brand it smells is not great. associated with yeah. branding. Is not associated. But I'll spend the same amount of money or on a Chanel or a YSL or a Versace, even if it doesn't smell as great. Oh. Because I feel, uh, why should I spend 10, 20,000 on a brand that doesn't have any legacy value? They should start with a lower price band, even if the fragrance is great, because people won't be willing to spend that much. Mm -hmm. These brands are legacy brands and people buy them from the, for the legacy value and the status value. So we, here we have Samar, who is a non-consumer. He never uses consumer. And even he said to me while having a conversation, Perfumes are just a flavoured water, you know, and mm. interesting thing, let's ask him, like, what's the biggest concern of not using perfumes? Like, why don't you use perfumes? And what's your perception towards people like Abhilash, who uses perfume frequently since the childhood? Class 3. Right, so, not towards Abhilash, yeah. but <laughs> towards people who use perfumes too frequently. I think it always comes off as gimmick and trying too hard. So, so your perception towards people is? That... It's trying too hard. Like if you, if I had a uh, classmate of mine in third grade who's using a perfume, it is trying too hard. It is trying to trying too hard in the sense. It is trying to be an adult too soon. It is trying to do so again. Like the women perception right, that we're <laughs> talking about, it is again trying too hard, trying to grab attention. It is attention-seeking behavior. Is by is oh. what I look at it. Okay. And I was strongly against that. Not <laughs> towards you. <laughs> no, not at him. <laughs> you're asking the people. Yeah. <laughs> so that is that is how I perceived it. And then which is why I was initially against perfumes. And then I also got to know the pricing of around perfumes and I was like, yeah, absolutely against perfumes. So is that your concern? Pricing is your concern or else attention initially, behavior in, is your concern? Initially, the marketing gimmicks that were around it were the concern okay. because I didn't like the perception that they were trying to create and I did not associate with the perception that they were trying to create. And then later on, pricing also became one of the concerns around perfumes. So, in fact, like the only perfumes that I now use, which is also very... You use perfumes? Which is very infrequently, right? Like twice a year, thrice okay. a year is our commoditized perfume. So for example, there's like man company that will do 50 ml for 200 rupees. And mm. that is also frankly 100 rupees too much. Mm. So those are the kind of products that I use that I have to use because the occasion demands so. What's the occasion? Dates. <laughs> <laughs> so you associate uh, it with the dates? Yeah, I mean, again, like trying to hard attention seeking right? <laughs> <laughs> is what I associated with, which is why exactly I'm using them around those occasions and those different things. But yeah, so that is my entire perception of perfumes that there's just a little too faff. And scent for me is supposed to be a byproduct. So for example, you use your soap, you use your shampoo, your scent is a byproduct. And that is naturally what it looks like for me. Right? So you talked about memories. My memories with my family are, let's say we're having a cup of coffee. So the memory is having coffee, not the scent of the coffee. Mm. Of course, the scent of the coffee triggers that memory. But the core memory at uh, there is the experience of having coffee with your members and just being around them. The smell doesn't matter. The smell doesn't matter to me. Mm -hmm. So that is how I look about the entire process. So now, now you know, like you know, he uses perfume for occasionally, the dates he associated, mm -hmm. and he is a price sensitive. Mm -hmm. You have been using like you know perfume since the class three. So if you want to pitch any of these things, what what one which one will you pitch and 
can you convince him to buy this see i might or i might not convince him but again you you, you can try that's see, our segment see, like uh, like smell doesn't matter Price i don't know i mean uh, see smell doesn't matter is something that i don't believe mm. if your class smells will you go and sit there for two hours no right What's if the there response? is no if there is no room freshener uh, in a washroom that you go in some malls or somewhere else will you go will you will you get inside the washroom no it always depends on the smell like for example uh, let's say let's say i'm just i'm just giving it an example uh, like we have our washrooms here where 600 students are mm -hmm, using mm -hmm. it if it's not clean if you don't use an air freshener if you don't use a room freshener or whatever it is would anyone go into the washroom no so smell always matters see for example you you clean your house you use some lysol or something it has a certain fragrance mm. it has some lavender it has some citrus if there is no such thing then your house also doesn't smell good what's the you you cook something house? like for example you cook some fish you cook some prawns you cook something else eventually fish and prawns whenever you cook it it actually uh, generate some yeah. kind of a smell well, at yeah. your place but again in order to clean uh, the utensils and as well like for example they 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 promote vim bar they promote all these kind of liquids and all why do they just clean and smell like this if your plate still smells like fish would you eat mm. no if your plate still smells like a prawn or something like you know some kind of a rotten thing would you eat so no so smell is a sensory thing i mean of course the the the, the what do you call i mean the coffee he has with his family the the tea which he has with his family of course is the core memory but in order to have that memory in order to eventually experience that memory and in order to remember that memory again in the future smell matters a lot so that's what i would uh, tell him not just here i mean that's a good pitch you started with actually what do you think my uh, flip narrative to that is that almost all social settings now have a scent in themselves so okay. why do you need to carry it with yourself so the fact that you say that a washroom has a air freshener that your class has an air freshener means that the environment is going to be regulated as such does not mean that you need to carry that scent with yourself and add to the environment because it does not add as a compensatory value right? <laughs> like for example let's say you uh, uh, of course i mean carrying additionally is something i would i would say i mean uh, yeah it might be needed it might not be needed for example uh, you are you are playing some sport okay a lot of people use deodorants while they mm. play sports they don't use perfumes because perfume when it mixes with sweat and all it it gives a different uh, fragrance so when you play a sport like let's say you playing some cricket you playing some badminton and all it it man it's mandatorily that you know you use some roll ons you either use some deodorants or something so that you know you creating an environment for yourself you're not doing it for someone else right you you feel because you know when you're sweating you know when you are smelling bad Does it change you you do, you don't you don't take a bath for like two days or three days continuously you know how you smell right <laughs> it's not something that someone would uh, come back and tell you it it feels so weird when someone tells you that you smell bad yeah instead if they tell that you smell good it gives you a very positive vibe it gives a very, it gives you a very positive feeling honestly and technique and honestly i'm speaking i i'm i'm not aware of how much experience you have in the real world you might have like 2 3 years of experience or 5 years of experience but again when you go into the real world like let's say after isb and you go into a larger companies as a ceo or you could be a manager you are leading a team of 10 you are leading a team of 15 and if there is no positive environment i don't think you will be able to you know set kind of an expectations to your teammates as well and i'm honestly telling you you might just try just give it a try for me for one day <laughs> that you know you put some perfume that i suggest which you which one for. you suggest i'll i'll suggest you this you wear your formals you wear a black that's you, a costly wear... one you had <laughs> that's okay you wear a, a black trouser you wear you wear a blue shirt or you wear a white shirt wear some uh, uh, what do you call tan shoes he's giving a dressing shoes. <laughs> dressing and i'm i'm i'm, I'm <laughs> telling him you wear this you go to the company where you get placed in isb and go to your team just talk to them at least two members from your team out of 10 if they don't ask you then you can just return it back and you know you can for your lifetime you can just tell me that abilash i'm not gonna believe in perfumes at all otherwise do i get to give the perfume what you can all <laughs> that that's something i wanna i wanna make sure that you know you are at a good place with a good positive environment so that's how i'm, I'm i want to suggest you smell it and like you, you know you can you can you. just you can try it on your just smell it from a distance yeah. what is the appropriate Our distance also yeah i yeah. mean certain like for example
it smells nice but it's also like a little too strong for me that's that's also like a function of me not so eventually once you put see it depends on how many sprays you do on your body right so you can just spray it once or twice and eventually after an hour the concentration comes down so that's when you actually smell it, the real essence of it so you know that's how it is so there are two things that i want to talk about from that right so like he's talked about sports and how like sensor related to like post sports you need a roll on i think your relationship with your perfume or uh, your habits is also a function of your upbringing so for example immediately after sports i was told that you need to take a shower at mm. the uh, either at the school facilities mm. or after the playground we used to go home and we used to take a shower which is why like soap became the initial by product via which mm-hmm. your regulate like your olfactory senses were regulated right per- roll ons and perfumes were never there and second like you talked about ki it's going to mellow down after an hour my problem with perfumes is also that that it mellows down after an hour you but don't realize there is a concentration right? there is like a certain can... constancy that's what it's it's not, it's not about mellow downing so what happens is initially when you put a perfume like the high concentrate like i'm not just talking about this this is a high concentration ones but when you put a medium concentration on perfume it depends on how many sprays you you do what is the right number of sprays see eventually hardly they say that it's hardly four number of four sprays that you do on your body but a, a person like me would eventually do 10 plus mm. i i do 10 plus so that's when the concentration eventually getting gets increased so you can just have like two sprays that's it you know it just makes you feel that okay i'm at a good pace i'm at a good space i'm you know it, it makes the other person feels good like for example uh i'm i'm just sitting here i mean i'm i'm sitting in a flight or somewhere else and the other person sits here i mean he doesn't smell good you know the whole journey is like a a, a bad experience for me i mean i would I, i i would just want to just leave from there but i cannot because i have to travel back to my place so you know i'm not suggesting people to use perfume and all but again you should be aware of the fact that you should you shouldn't be a, a reason for the other person you are doing yeah. not like a directly kharid lo kar ke ha kharid lo bol ke nahi but again you you are just setting a kind of a positive and a genuine uh, environment for the other person who is just beside you just you know you are always not just caring about me but also you need to care about the place where you are as a person so that's what i'll i'll just tell but what's it's not a compulsion take? for everyone to use it it depends what's your take samar my take is i agree with all that uh, abhilash is saying but it also for me eventually it does come down to price price yeah it it does come what, down what, to price your... that's when go use myop it comes it falls under the prices that you want to go for <laughs> Honestly, I'll suggest you. The, like after like listening to him, like you know, you uh, like smelling or else you listen to him before. Yeah. So, does it change your perception apart from dates? I should like use it occasionally so, or else in a daily. Like, so you know, that's once. what I was talking to Asa also about. It does change your perception because now you view the category in a different light. Earlier, both of us, uh, at least I used to look the category, uh, look at the category as a commoditized product that is over and above. It's like an accessory, right? Mm. It's not important. Yeah. So. I used to look at the category as something that's needed once in a while. Now I look at it as an experience. For him, it's yeah. an experience. Mm. For him, it's not something that's an accessory or that you need once in a while. It's something that's a part of your personality. Mm. And I think having that is also okay as long as that part of the personality curtails the expenditure. Which is why, if the pricing is right, I will go for it. How much you're willing to pay after after haul is like narration and after certain selling? Um. So, for example, like the last bottle I purchased uh, was 50 ml for 300 rupees. Okay. Uh, I think that is still where I put the cap in, but I would use it a little more regularly mm-hmm. than earlier, which is why my purchases over the course of the year will increase eventually. Okay. Good. Here we are. Uh, hi, Priyanshi. Hello there. Thanks very much for having us. <laughs> <laughs> Again, like so, Priyanshi, we know your journey. You know, we know how you bought the perfumes and how you are as a customer or the consumer of perfumes. Here we are. Here we have Asta, who haven't used perfumes till now. She just like want to explore. So now, hmm. give her your brief. Why perfumes are important aspect of a personality? Because as you said, a lot of things comes under personality, right? Like hmm. it's hmm. all the psychological impact. Hmm. So, can you pitch her any of your perfumes? and before that we'll get to know her why you haven't used any perfumes till now uh, i think uh, the first interaction of perfumes with me were with really stronger smells okay. fra- and fragrances and that really caused like bad headaches like for actual reasons oh. to me okay. and uh, like I-, i didn't have a very feel good factor but then i was able to explore the other sides of things as well like there were some better fragrances like i think priyanshi told about the fresher ones like more citrusy mm-hmm. one more i think toned down ones 
so i think that's where before her what's your perception towards people who are using uh so my perception is that uh, i i still feel that they are a bit of a materialistic need <laughs> somewhere and and <laughs> once <fine>. you <laughs> and once you once you get Shock. into the whole uh, drill of it you just can't get out of it yes. and then you just keep on going 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 on further but i am still not uh, very much into like being uh, very loyal towards a particular perfume or uh, in general perfume are you loyal <laughs> no in general life are you loyal in general life you in general <laughs> life i am very loyal <laughs> but perfumes aren't that convincing for me yet Ooh. now <laughs> it's your part to convince her why mm. it's necessary to use perfumes and okay tr- start from the perception aspect actually because she think it's like you know it's not necessary obviously for you it became an acidity like ha huh. because once you're into it as she said it's hard to get out then you want to smell every possible perfume there is on the planet yeah. so asta are there some days when you feel less confident than usual not really <laughs> she's always really confident okay, oh. that failed okay asta <laughs> do you want people to like sitting next to you yeah obviously then fantastic <laughs> 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 there you have it <laughs> But my point is that is that the only way to make people sit. That's an easy way. Do you want to take the hard way? Why? But isn't this also like some kind of effort that you're putting in? This is literally one minute of effort. You put five sprays and you're done. But the kind of research you go through to just buy you just that, that one perfume. I'll do the research for you. No, no. Now we are doing after that. Yeah. You have to make her a consumer. So how you when once you start using perfumes then you don't need an equal amount of research every time because then you know what's the kind that you like and I I want to talk about the um, the point that you mentioned why you don't like perfumes because you were you started off on the wrong foot that doesn't mean that you should just reject the perfume uh, world altogether just because you started off with a bad perfume so i would like to introduce you to the better side of the perfume world and uh, you can <laughs> better <laughs> side yeah <laughs> because you thought that that was really heavy so i'm assuming that you like more fresh and citrusy and florally yeah. fragrances so why don't you try this one i think you just sprayed a bit of it <laughs> and i am able to smell and, it and give me why you're pitching it specifically yeah. because she told me her preferences that she doesn't like really heavy perfumes heavy. Okay. if yeah, she I liked think. those i would uh, yeah so i i think she she did uh, give me aqua which mm. which i think somewhere i have tried and okay. i have liked it a bit but but it but it perfumes aren't still like uh, the one thing that i'm surely going to do mm-hmm. when it comes to uh, you know going out or going around it's not it's not something like a part of an essential still for me as as for the people who are actually using it <laughs> okay why don't you smell this one Yeah this is this this is this is fine but like I fine <laughs> like I also price sensitive fine uh so i i'm price sensitive in terms of that if i really would like the fragrance that i then i would be willing to pay How that much? much uh to start off with <laughs> I am I am not very sure that uh, how much it goes to but maybe I can start with the 7 to 8 kind of 100 no like 1000 that's that's a good thing that's no, good like, enough those are for the luxury perfumes I'm not saying like I would pay something uh, l- that much for perfumes that are at Zara hmm. for example yeah. I would never pay that much for a Zara but obviously for uh, trying on a luxury kind of a brand like for these so wh- wh- why why like why you want to use luxury not the regular ones and being you th- being a non consumer like you know you don't use perfume regularly why you want to directly get into the uh, luxury thing uh i don't want to really get into luxury thing but i think uh, with luxury brands i think they maybe bring a stronger credibility in terms of their lasting and in terms of the quality high, you, of the perfume you you like the high concentration yeah in terms of the in terms of the lasting and the quality of the perfume and the kind of fragrance i think there there would be a more distinct fragrance as compared to be a very uh, common fragrance that you will anyway find hmm. around so i think uh, that is where i would really kind of invest into as compared to getting a, a more generic because generic is any way you can get it in mm-hmm. a lesser price yeah. so like That's now it. she's you know her price point she yeah. has a willingness which one will you uh, like you know pitch her and convince her to use it frequently 
what will be, be like a sales person of uh, any of the brands which you are using now that's a major demotion i, I think, think, <laughs> think priya i'm a very <laughs> easy consumer for you at this no, you point just, of time <laughs> you just told me that scene tense is okay okay yeah <laughs> i'm very heartbroken <laughs> right now sorry <laughs> okay you didn't like this a lot no this is nice because it's again aqua because um, it's okay yeah it's it's fine like i would i would i kind of can can use it on a on a day to day basis but yeah. obviously when you think of on a broader occasions point of view you would like some kind of and yeah, so you that's an occasion that perfume and that's so let me now show you one that you can use both for occasions and for uh, like normal class purposes Yeah, I think this is kind of nice. Now she convinced a little bit of like ah. <laughs> From nice, she's gone to kind of yeah, nice. Yeah. I don't know what I need to do. We can get have an interesting packaging one. Will you ever buy this for uh, the packaging? Uh, so the packaging is attractive, but uh, I wouldn't buy Smell if it. I don't like the fragrance. To be honest, this is the spray. Yeah, yeah but but isn't this kind of a bit uh, on a sweeter? Yeah. Yeah. It's more for it's more occasion yeah. wear than normal. Yeah, wear. I agree. But I think I I I like that more as compared to this. So now, what's the cost of it? It's Versace Dylan Blue uh, for women. The cost of this, I think, is around might be seven eight thousand. I think it fits perfectly into my budget. <laughs> so I've done my job. Right Woohoo! there, I so you're willing to buy it. Uh. And it's good packaging. Yeah. It's it's shaped <laughs> like a poison bottle. You which should is know if I'm not ready to buy this for packaging, <laughs> I would never buy it. No, that I'm saying that's packaging. That's a wrong point to pitch. <laughs> But I'm just saying packaging is an added benefit. You like the fragrance, yeah. plus it looks good on your shelf. Yeah, I think yeah maybe I would because if it, I think it comes with a brand tag on it. So I think uh, it would I can if it is lasting enough yeah for sure because, so yeah. then then I would be ready to pay that much but if it wasn't lasting enough which I think every sales person says <laughs> that it is lasting enough oh my god <laughs> <laughs> I'm not entirely sure but yeah if she says then so I you're convinced to buy that one for seven thousand this way yeah, yeah. Okay. kind of cool.